Hey guys, Michael Corsentino. Welcome to the companion video for my July lighting column in Shutter Magazine. This month we're looking at how to deconstruct light. Um, basically what I mean by that is I know if you're like me, you've probably seen lots of lighting, lots of magazine covers, movie posters, etc. Uh, all of the various visual stimuli that we see that surrounds us. Uh, and you've seen lighting in it that really uh, stops you in your tracks and gets you excited and you want to figure out how to create that lighting, how to recreate that lighting, or how, at least how to decode it, uh, and deconstruct it, and figure out what was done, the tools and techniques that were used to create it, because this way you just become a better lighting technician, you become a better photographer, you uh, have more creative options at your disposal, and you, have, you build a vocabulary uh, that you can plug in when needed um, to create the effects that you want, to create the looks that you want. You know, there's one, there's no one size fits all look. Uh, so having a whole palette of tools and techniques at your disposal, uh, more importantly, techniques, um, and know-how is really what it's all about. So I just pulled together, uh, this grid here of images that you see in front of you, uh, that are some of my favorite images. And I have, and this is in no particular order of importance or, uh, the, uh, um, level of my how much I love them uh, I have thousands and thousands of images that I have um, you know uh, gotten from the internet uh, from Google searches that I photographed with my iPhone um, walking around you know posters billboards magazine covers in supermarkets I'll photograph screens and movie theaters I'll photograph the screens off uh, you know off of a TV if there's something a beautiful composition something really compelling or some cool lighting um, so there are just a ton of resources out there and sources of inspiration all around you, everywhere, just pervading us. Um, so I am really all about just, you know, kind of capturing those and filing them away and, you know, reviewing them, looking at them. I have tons on my phone, uh, folders on my laptop, folders on my desktop computer, so there's no shortage of uh, folders and uh, repositories for these images. And they're just a great way to kind of jumpstart your creativity and get you excited um, in your own image making and to push forward with your, your creativity. So this is just a grid uh, of some of those images. And the most important thing is when you start to look at these images, uh, if you think about what was done to create them, you're able to kind of deconstruct them and take them apart and unpack them, um, specifically the lighting in this case. And figure out what was done. Is the lighting soft? Is the lighting hard? Where is the lighting coming from? What is the direction of the light? What is the height of the light? Um, is it contrasty light? Is it not contrasty light? Um, you know, how many catch lights are there in the eyes? All of those things, uh, you know, and, and in some cases where there are gels used, where there are no gels used, you know, all of those things are going to help you figure out what was done, the tools and techniques that were used to create that particular look. And then that allows you just tremendous flexibility in your own work. Um, again, because you don't just want to do, you know, you don't just want recipes. You don't just want, you know, because those don't really serve you well. They're great and it's, it's good to have some recipes. Um, you know, like I love working out of a cookbook. Uh, to use a kitchen analogy, and that's fantastic because it then allows you to riff. Um, once you follow that one recipe, then you can go out and create your own stuff. So I would say that, you know, these are great recipe, um, you know, fat building blocks, foundation blocks. It's great to try to recreate the light that you love, deconstruct it, recreate it, and then it allows you to uh, create your own stuff, to find your own voice with those techniques and tools, right? So that's really what, what this is all about, and that's what it's all about for me. Like, I love doing this. Um, if I see something that really excites me, I love to jump into the studio and try and recreate it and then give my own spin uh, to it. So, uh, and it's just, you know, again, building that vocabulary and keeping things exciting and fresh and moving forward in your work. So I want to talk a little bit about the impetus the, and the inspiration behind this image that I created last week of um, a rock band that I work with, Blaine the Mono. They are a band that you have probably seen if you follow this column. Um, more than once. Uh, they're a band that I work with often and they're a great uh, indie rock band based in Orlando. And they came into the studio for some promotional work and um, this was the idea that I wanted to do with them for uh, some of their promotional needs and potentially a new album cover coming up. So, uh, this was the, uh, the idea for this was to give this really dramatic kind of side lit look. 
Um, and the, the inspiration for this image was something that I saw in Las Vegas, and here's that image. Now this is something that's a promotional image for the Australian Bee Gees. Uh, it's, I guess, a cover band um, that, that does Bee Gees tunes in Vegas. Um, and uh, I saw this big billboard um, out walking around in Vegas at WPPI. Uh, and I just, it just kind of stopped me in my tracks. And as, you know, which is what all these inspiring images really do. They kind of stop me and make me think about light and get me excited about light and shadow and highlight and, and all the things that, you know, that lighting can do, the drama that you can create with it or the softness or whatever the particular look is, right? So I saw this and it kind of, this was a look that I had wanted to do for a while, but it kind of made me remember that I had wanted to do this because I've seen this look elsewhere, uh, but it just kind of jogged my memory and said, hey, you know, rem yeah, this is something you had wanted to, to you know, to produce yourself. So uh, that's what I said about doing in the images that you just saw. So we'll revisit that and we'll talk about how I created that. But right now I want to talk about decoding images, okay? So when I look at this image or when you look at any image, again, the things that you're going to think about when you're trying to unpack them, when you're trying to figure out what was done to create them, uh, you're going to look at the amount of light, the light coverage. How big is the pool of light, right? So right here I can see that there's a very small pool of light. So to me, right away, that tells me that it's more than likely some kind of grid or a bunch of flags to, to, you know, to shape and control the light, to confine the light to a very small pool of light. So that's where I started with a grid, and happily that was, you know, that fit the bill. Um, I wasn't sure whether it was an egg crate grid used on a strip box or whether it was a, a, a rigid a grid spot used on a reflector on a strobe. Uh, it ended up being the grid spot, the latter, um, and that worked out. But anyway, so right away I, I'm sort of making judgment calls about how the image was created and, and you know making notes to myself about how to you know get this look myself. Right? I'm also going to look at the direction of the light. I'm going to look at the direction of the shadows. I'm going to look at the depth of the shadows, right? So uh, let me get on a drawing layer here and we can address some of this. So you can see here that there's a shadow from the nose and I'm kind of looking at how, what is the angle of that shadow and what is the depth of that shadow? How far does it fall? Because that's going to dictate things like the, the height of my light and where I'm positioning that relative to the subject around the circumference, right, of the subject. And everybody loves my drawing, so just uh, bear with it. Um, and uh, I'm going to look at the fact that, you know, that all of this is in shadow. I'm going to look at the, the um, how quickly the highlights transition from highlight into shadow, right? That's going to indicate uh, the kind of reflector that was used. That's going to indicate the distance of the light um, uh, or the kind of modifier, I should say, that was used rather than the reflector. Um, you know, if, if it's a very slow and gradual transition, that's going to tell me different things than if it's a very rapid and crisp transition. Uh, here we've got uh, something kind of in the middle. Uh, it does fall deeply into shadow, as you can see, but it is not super, super sharp edged, um, which tells me that the light is closer than further away, uh, but it is a very deep, dark shadow, right? Uh, which tells me that there's an, an, a you know, pretty, pretty good angle to the light. Um, and there's also a lot of uh, specularity, which is telling me that it is more than likely something close to a bare strobe, uh, not, a, not a soft box. Um, which is what the uh, what a you know what a strobe with a grid kind of is. It's got some um, focus to it, you know, to to use to, uh, to, for lack of a better term, um, but uh, it is not diffused. It is not a diffused source, right? So it's not necessarily soft uh, and gradual in the transitions, right, between shadow and highlight, which you would get you know a more diffused look with a softbox or any kind of diffused material in front of your light source. Right. Uh, let me see. Am I forgetting anything? Uh, we'll refer to the article as well. But those are generally the considerations that you're going to take when you're kind of de decoding. Oh yeah, let's talk about catch lights also. That's another thing. Good uh, catch lights. So there aren't really that many catch lights going on in the eyes here. But that's one thing that you're going to want to look at because the catch lights and those are the reflections in the eyes are going to tell you a lot about what kind of modifiers were used. It's going to tell you a lot about how many light sources were used. Uh, whether a reflector was used, sometimes you'll see a reflector underneath, 
for a fill. Sometimes you'll see a second light source underneath for a fill. So all of these kinds of elements are going to give you the building blocks to recreate uh, the lighting that you've seen, the lighting that inspires you for yourself. It's really pretty simple stuff. All right, so let's turn this off just so you guys can see that one last time uh, without any drawing on it. And then we'll go here. Now, my friend uh, once saw this and reminded me uh, of this Beatles album cover and said, hey, you know, uh, I, that really reminds me of the um, Meet the Beatles album cover. So I had to go and refresh my memory and look that up. So again, you know, this is a look that has been done as are you know, almost all the looks that we've seen. One person inspires another person who then inspires another person and it just goes on like that. And that's a beautiful thing because everybody brings something unique to the table, something that they make it their own. Uh, here we can see that all the lighting is coming from the left. Um, in this image, uh, there's a variety. Uh, you know, light is coming from the right and light is coming from the left. And then the center guy is also lit from the right. Uh, so, you know, lots of different ways to approach it. Um, and this is, a, obviously the shadows are a lot deeper uh, in this than they are in uh, the Beatles. There's a little bit more light coming in to the shadow side of the face here. So let's talk about the tools that I used to create. This is a very simple look to create, all right? I just used one 500 watt second strobe and a 20 degree grid spot, all right? Now you guys know that I shoot a variety of lights. I shoot Profoto, I shoot Ellen Chrome. Uh, I shoot brown color modifiers, I shoot Ellen Chrome modifiers. I use the tools that are the right tools for the job, okay? Um, and in this case, the Profoto was the right tool because I, I, I like these grids um, in certain circumstances because they're very, very small, okay? They're, they're, in, when you're working with a grid, there's not only the uh, density or the degree of the grid that you're using, and there's, you know, 5 degree, 10 degree, 20 degree, etc. Um, but in the case of the Profoto grids, they're, they're little small caps. So I knew that that cap size, a lot of the other grids are seven inch uh, grids that you fit into seven inch reflectors, right? Uh, so it's a wider circle and I wanted a really tight circle. Uh, now I started with uh, a 20 degree uh, grid spot. I could have gone a lot tighter, uh, but happily, it fit the bill, it worked out. The 20 degree was the ticket and it, it, it worked. So that's the lighting, again, super simple, right? Uh, one light, something that you guys can definitely try. A lot of you guys have one light. If you don't have a grid, they're not an expensive thing to pick up, you know, and you can create this look. I also used, for the background, I just used a Lasta Light um, skylight panel with black fabric stretched over it. This is referred to as black block. Um, typically, I'll use that to introduce shadow or to block the sun if I'm shooting on location. Uh, great, great tool. I can't say enough good things. Those of you guys who follow my stuff know that uh, I'm all about subtraction panels for introducing shadow and for blocking the sun when needed. All right, so let's take a look at how the shoot went down. Uh, so I wanted to have plenty of options. Uh, I wanted to be able to uh, have a mixture of images. So basically every uh, member of the band, there are four members of the band, and each member of the band, I photographed them four different ways. Uh, two using the key light on the right and two using the key light on the left. And once I had the key light set up on the right, it was really easy to just flip everything around. I just used a measuring tape and I, I, once I had metered the key light on the right, uh, I then really didn't need to meter it again because I was able to just, you know, kind of use shorthand and just use a measuring tape. I measured the distance from, let me get back onto a drawing layer. I measured the distance from the light to the midpoint of my subject and that was five feet. And then when it came time to flip it around, I just matched the distance here and did the same thing there, right? So five feet there, and I was pretty much in the ballpark. I had to noodle a little bit to find the right angles and make sure my shadows, you know, the degree, the angle um, and height and all that were the same, but just the angle, just to make sure that everything was matchy-matchy. So that all matched up really nicely. So again, I created four looks two with a light on the right and two with a look on the left. So you can see here there's a left facing where it creates more of a kind of a Rembrandt look. We've got that triangle there and then we've got the shadow here and that is a classic kind of Rembrandt look. And then when the uh, subject is turned directly toward the camera, it gave me a nice split light look, splitting the face in half with light and shadow, right? And then I replicated the same thing on the other side, right? So that gave me plenty of options to work with, okay, because I wanted to have lots of options. I wasn't sure whether I, w I wanted to have all the band members uh, in the final composited piece, everyone looking left or everyone looking right. 
uh, or a mixture. I wasn't exactly sure how things were going to lay out. So, and plus, I wanted to, perhaps I wanted to create more than one layout. Uh, oftentimes, with promotional work. Uh, there are different applications for it. Some things, well, maybe they'll be used online. Maybe they'll be used on, a, on an album cover. So you want to give yourself as much flexibility as you can and give yourself options. And art directors always want options and it's, uh, as well as clients. And so it's good, to, it's good to do that. It gives you flexibility and options. And it's always better than kicking yourself after the fact and saying, why didn't I shoot this one particular thing? Um, which you'll probably end up doing anyway. I do all the time, but the more options that you can give yourself, the better it is. So let's take a look at our contact sheet. So here's my Capture One workspace, and you can see the five star selects uh, and the various uh, orientations of the light, left key light, right key light, uh, left facing, uh, center facing, and uh, left facing. Did I say left facing? <laughs> right facing, center facing, and, and uh, left, left lit. Uh, so there you go. And so here's what everything looks like straight. This is one potential uh, look where we've got the light uh, on the two subjects on top, on Eric and Randy is coming from the right and then we've got Cliff and Chris lit from the left so that's one potential way to do it uh, with them facing straight on that that is one particular look that I could have gone with for our final and I may end up you know doing that and compositing that together because I think it looks pretty cool and they love that look uh, then there's key light with the right okay I could have done everybody to the right right so here we have everybody lit from the right and facing the right and let's take a look at key light left. Now we've got everybody looking to the left and lit from the left. All right? Now we could also do two looking to the right and two looking to the left. So you can see here that the, the variations that you know really start to add up. You've got a lot of different possibilities and different ways to play this out when you're compositing your final together. So here's the final arrangement that I decided to go with was this. So I'm going to have uh, Randy in the center. That's uh, Randy right here. She's the lead singer. Let's go up to give ourselves a drawing layer. Let's turn this on. Oops, so you can see some of the drawing. But anyway, that is Randy. Um, she's the lead singer. And then we've got Eric. So those are they're both lit from the right. So I would put them off to the right. And then have uh, Chris and Cliff to the left. And they are lit from the left. So I kind of like the way that played out. Uh, and let's take a look at um, at that. Here we go. Here are the finals, right? So this is the way I decided to arrange it and play it out. So the next thing that I had to do was to jump into Photoshop. One other note is I also desaturated these a little bit in Capture One just to give it a more dramatic look. It's kind of a look that I favor and I thought it was suitable for this subject matter to keep it kind of dramatic and moody. Uh, so let's take a look at, at the final. So here we go. There's the final, all composited together. A little bit of Photoshop work, a little retouching, a uh, little pretty simple compositing to get them all on the same black canvas. Um, and uh, really, you know, I'm happy with this look. I think it worked out really well. The band loved it. Uh, and again, you know, it's all just about following your inspiration and putting your own spin on it. Uh, and, uh, you know, keeping your techniques and your creativity growing and, put, and, you know, pushing yourself, moving forward, trying new things. So I encourage you guys to do that. You know, get out there and push past your boundaries, find stuff that you love, and uh, <clears throat> work toward recreating it. It's not as hard as you think once you have a few kind of guidelines and you know uh, how to unpack and deconstruct the light, then it's pretty easy to kind of jump in and attempt to recreate it. You'll always end up kind of going down different paths and finding new and exciting things that you weren't really counting on. And that's really where the beautiful thing, you know, the, where, well, what's beautiful about it. That's where the magic really happens. So uh, anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this month. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you next month. Take care.